Welcome everybody. This is my video on the Moki Dugway. Uh, we'll be traveling from the top, going down to the bottom. Uh, I have another video uh, on the Moki Dugway. This, uh, the second one is on uh, using a drone, so you might want to check that out. Uh, as we uh, descend here, the, the place where we started is basically where the road turns from pavement to dirt. We're on the dirt road now. And uh, as you can see, we got a nice view with a wide angle lens. It's using a Panasonic GH2 with a 7mm lens on it. It's a pretty wide angle. Uh, nice use of the uh, red sandstone that the road is basically cut into. And the mesa in the you know, distance there that you see on the right side, just basically in that direction is Monument Valley, about 25 miles further down. Now we're approaching the the first or the top uh, Muley Point observation or uh, stopover point, which has a nice uh, view of, of the valley below. And as we proceed further down, we'll make I'll make a stop at the um, the next pullover point, which is about a third of the way down the uh, the uh, the road, <clears throat> and it's um, probably the most popular uh, place to stop. Uh, you can hike a, a little bit and be able to see basically east towards uh, the Valley of the Gods. So we're coming to that here shortly, and uh, like I said, I'll, I'll stop and then I'll, I'll resume the video and uh, follow the rest of the way down. So you can see basically towards the, the center right, the road as it winds towards Mexican Hat. It's about seven miles from the base of the... Uh, Moki Dugway to the intersection. All right, this is the uh, the most popular turnout place, and if you were to walk straight further, uh, hike a little bit, you can see the um, the place where people uh, where you can look to the to the east and the Valley of the Gods. Okay, um, resuming the uh, the journey. As I said, we've come down about a third of the way. There's a kind of a plateau area just off to the left here. We're down maybe 300 feet from, from the start. Uh, the road is dirt for these three miles in most places, but there are a couple of places, particularly in the turns, the, the, the sharper turns, where they have some pavement. It's not great pavement, but I, I guess they put them there to, uh, to be a little safer um, than just dirt. And as you'll notice, in a lot of places, there you have that kind of washboardy effect, which um, is is not as bad as a lot of roads I've been on dirt roads, but it's it's something to keep in mind. And you can see the road kind of turn to the around the the, the mountain here, and then it's going to make a, a left turn. And you saw the road below us just a second ago. Basically, straight ahead of where I'm driving would be Mount uh, Monument Valley. This uh, road was built in 1958, 57-58, uh, for the uranium mining operations that were uh, going on 
the uh, the mine up at uh, Fry Canyon, which is above the uh, the, the Moki uh, Dugway, and the mine processing that was done just south of uh, Mexican Hat. So imagine heavy ore laden trucks traversing this mountain in the winter with bad brakes. Must have been fun. <clears throat> now we're a good two-thirds of the way down down the mountain by this point. And almost directly ahead of us at this point is a uh, Mexican hat. About eight or nine miles away. If you look at the um, the mesas in the distance, uh, the more or less sheer vertical drop is about the first half, and then you have this roughly 45, 50, 60 degree angle of scree or whatever it is. That um, So it's not a, a completely vertical drop. You'll notice I had to stop. There was a, a rock in the road, and the guy coming the other direction um, made it so I had to stop. He, if he had kept going, I would have just slowed down. And But you have to watch out for stuff like that, as you can imagine. A uh, steep hillside like that, rocks uh, are, are an issue. As is dust. The uh, camera that I'm using here, the, the Panasonic GH2, as I mentioned, is actually mounted to the top of the car, the roof of the car, with a magnetic mount that I... Uh, fabricate it. So you don't have to look through the windshield where you get that reflection, uh, but you do have to worry about a little dust. Uh, additionally, uh, the, the camera's got a microphone, so it's recording audio, but being outside the car and, you know, 20, 30 mile an hour, you're going to have wind noise. So I've got the sound cut down about 30 dB. This is, I believe, the last hairpin turn, and very shortly we're on. Yeah, we're on the pavement now. So we're still on the dugway technically, but um, we're we're now on pavement. And coming up here very shortly will be a sign and a dirt road that heads to the uh, Valley of the Gods. It's one of the two entrance exits of the Valley of the uh, Gods. Uh, the other one is off of uh, Route 163, north of the junction that we're, we'll be coming to. So we're, we're coming to that real close now. Um, I'll... I'll show you in a second when we get there. Right about here is the uh, the actual bottom of the Moki Dugway. And there's the sign for Valley of the Gods and there's the dirt road off to the left right there. And uh, that loop, dirt loop road, is 17 miles for Valley of the Gods. It's generally a, a fairly drivable road. Uh, there are some places where it's a little bit rougher. And, of course, uh, as with any of these dirt roads, after a rain, uh, they can be pretty impassable. So you just have to be careful what the weather is like. So we're going to continue driving, actually going to continue all the way into and through Mexican Hat and right down to the, uh, the bridge over the San Juan River. So from the bottom of the Moki Dugway to the intersection here is about seven miles, so it'll take a few minutes. Um, 
speed limit here is about 55. I know it kind of looks like I'm going faster, but that's just the uh, the way the wide angle lens makes things look. I am either going the speed limit or a little below it, so. Just before you get to the end of this road, which is uh, State Route 261, and it obviously becomes the Moki Dugway when we get to the, uh, the uh, switchback section, climbing the cliff, but once you get uh, to within about a mile or mile and a half or so of the end of this, there's a road off to the uh, right for the uh, Goosenecks State Park. And if you decide to go there, like many of the, um, the canyon vistas in this part of the country, there's lots of places with uh, no railings and sheer vertical drops of several hundred feet, a thousand feet. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind if you've got kids or pets. Um, people fall every year. It, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you'll notice uh, the sky here is is has got some interesting clouds in it. Uh, one of the unfortunate things about the desert is that in the summertime and the warmer seasons of the year, you can have long stretches day after day after day with not a single cloud in the sky, nothing but boring blue skies. So having some clouds is a nice thing. At the junction uh, of 261 and 163, coming up here in a few minutes, if you make the right turn, as we will here, you'll be heading towards Mexican Hat, which is three or four miles away from the intersection. And if you continue another 20 miles, thereabouts, you'll come to Monument Valley. But if instead of making the right turn, you make a left turn, you'll be heading uh, up towards Moab, which is about 125 miles away. If you were to turn around from where we're heading now on 261 and go back up the Moki Dugway and continue to the end of it, you'll come to uh, the... Well, let me see the name of it so I don't mess it up. Natural Bridges, that's it. The uh, Natural Bridges National Monument, which is, uh, you come to basically the northern end of 261, make a left turn onto 95, and in just a few miles, uh, you'll have a right turn to, to, to uh, hit the uh, Natural Bridges. And if you were to continue on 95 towards the west, you'll come to uh, a crossing of the Colorado River and basically the beginning of the uh, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. And further still towards Hanksville and then heading west from there, you'll uh, head into some more of the natural uh, national parks in, in Utah. Capitol Reef National Park and Escalante um, Grand, Stair uh, Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument, and then further west on uh, 12, Bryce Canyon, 
Um, and then south on 89 to Zion, uh, southern Utah is just amazing. Okay, we're getting very close to the um, Gooseneck State Park, in fact. I think we're just about there. Alright, so there's the turn off to the right for Gooseneck State Park. And as I said, we're about a mile, mile and a half or so from the intersection with 163. And almost directly ahead of you right now, but because of the wide-angle lens, you really can't see it with any detail, is the Mexican hat formation. Alright, so here's the junction. We will be making the right turn. I guess that's a California stop, I'm not sure. And you can just barely make out um, the Mexican hat formation center vertically and about uh, a quarter of the way over from the left hand side. But uh, again, because of the wide angle lens things are made very small looking so it's kind of tough to actually see it here I'll show you when we get to the turn off to um, to to get a closer look at it most of the people who, who take pictures of the Mexican hat formation basically do it from this road they just kind of pull over take a couple of pictures and and, and drive on but um, you know, you can you can drive down some of these dirt roads, and they're in pretty good shape. So you, you, a passenger car is perfectly fine. Again, unless it's just after a rain. But um, it, passenger passenger cars just fine. Actually, you can see the Mexican hat formation fairly well there. It's it, a lot smaller than it would appear visually as you're driving, but as you can see. It's moving to the left-hand corner of the screen, and there's just out of, out of view. So, And the dirt road is will be off to the left, coming up here in just a little bit. See the signs, and it'll be basically this dirt road right here. And you're only two or three miles from uh, the village of Mexican Hat at this point, so. One of the joys of driving in this part of the country is, you know, there's generally little traffic and generally very few stop signs and traffic lights so you can just put it on cruise control at 55 miles an hour I think the speed limit in most of the places is 65 obviously and slower in, in, in the villages so you can you can just set the cruise control and go for extended periods of time without having to put your foot on the brake it's uh, it's actually very relaxing for me anyway behind the Mexican hat formation which would be 
we've passed it, but it's on the left-hand side. As you'll notice, these kind of chevron sort of formations in the uh, the rock structure on the left, that's uh, all along the San Juan River. Uh, and if you, if you do come to Mexican Hat and decide to take some pictures or video of the formation, do yourself a favor and take that dirt road and go behind it out along the San Juan River and the rock formations along the, the San Juan River are almost as spectacular as the Mexican Hat Formation itself and in some ways more spectacular. So don't miss the really cool stuff just because you want to take a couple pictures of the iconic Mexican Hat Formation. Okay, so here we are entering the Mexican Hat Village itself and trust me in a second we'll be through it because that's about what all it is. You have uh, a gas station on the right, a couple of, you know, like restaurant, curio, knick-knack stores, a couple of not so great hotels, and then you, and there's a cafe there, then you descend down the road heading towards the San Juan Bridge and the hotel that I stayed in, and usually stay in when I'm in the area, is this one that's right beside the bridge. And it's usually fairly crowded, and they have a restaurant that's part of it, so uh, this would be a good sort of base of operations for the area. With Monument Valley, um, Mexican Hat, the Valley of the Gods, Moki Dugway, Natural Bridges, the Glen Canyon area, and uh, further south, it, towards the Four Corners region, Canyon de Chelle, it's there's so much. This is a great hub for exploring the West. And our trip is just about at an end at the San Juan Hotel or Motel and Trading Post. Again, thank you for watching.